over the next uh, uh, few set of modules, we will be basically introducing to you uh, the fundamentals of networking, computer networking uh, specifically and uh, then take you into the world of network security. So, as uh, was discussed earlier, uh, uh, the set of modules that is actually following this uh, will give you a basic introduction of uh, what exactly is computer networking all about. Uh, we will try to actually introduce you to the jargons uh, in the networking domain as well as take you into the world of network security. Uh, so that when in our subsequent modules when you actually go into really working hands on on different kinds of network security products, you get an idea about uh, what exactly that we are talking of. So, what exactly is an internet? Uh, so, if you look at it basically from a, the components point of view, uh, it is strictly a mechanism by which I have uh, different kinds of devices uh, connected. Um, and uh, the number of devices here could be running into many millions together, where uh, I have something called as a host. So, you will find people referring to as host or as an end system, but essentially they both mean one and the same. The host or the end systems will actually be running the uh, applications, what we refer to as a network application. So, uh, for example, you would typically be running a browser, uh, you would be typically running a uh, email uh, uh, client software and so on or you would typically be running a web server depending on what kind of an uh, application that you are trying to start off with. Now, the host or the end systems will run the different kinds of network applications that will be required uh, for the data to be exchanged from one system to another system and that is essentially what networking is all about. Now, how is this data going to be getting exchanged from one system to another system? you will have people refer to it as what is called as a communication link. So, the communication link here uh, could be either based on a fiber or a copper or a radio satellite, so many different uh, types of physical transmission medium that is available. So, there are different types of communication links that are actually available. Uh, so, the communication link medium could be either a fiber cable, uh, it could be a copper cable, it could be radio, it could be satellite uh, and so on and so forth. Now, how do we really differentiate between what kind of uh, communication link will be typically suited for a specific requirement? Uh, it would be dependent on what is the, the rate, the transmission rate that your network application would typically require. So, that will be dependent on what is the network application that is running. So, depending on the network application, the rate by which the, the data needs to be transferred will be a expected to be from a particular from a starting from a particular range to a particular range and that is basically the transmission rate is basically what is referred to as the the bandwidth for example at our homes we would be we would have actually got uh, our provider telling us that he will be able to offer it uh, offer us like a 2 mbps line or a 4 mbps line or a 16 mbps line and so forth so this MBBS that is the megabits per second is basically what is referred to as a transmission rate or the bandwidth, right. So, when you talk of the internet from the individual components perspective, you have the host or the end systems in which you typically have the network applications running. So, some common examples of network applications could be your email application, could be your browser application, could be your web server application and so on and so forth. And these network applications are going to be actually exchanging the data between the two end systems over what is commonly referred to as a communication link. And these communication links could either be uh, links based on fiber optic or could be based on copper or radio on uh, likewise uh, we have different kinds of physical media on which I could uh, really try to transfer the data across at the lowest physical level. And uh, then we also introduce the concept of a bandwidth uh, which essentially uh, means what is the total capacity or the transmission rate which we would typically like to have uh, uh, available for the data to be getting transferred from one machine to another end system. So, apart from that uh, we also have something called as routers. These router devices uh, as we would have actually heard uh, uh, in quite a few scenarios before, uh, these router devices are the ones that are responsible. Uh, for forwarding the packets from the source machine to the destination machine, right. So, if my uh, data traffic has to go for example, from Chennai 
uh, to Mumbai, I would need to have the packets which are originating from my system, whether it be a PC or a laptop, whatever it is, uh, sort of forwarded all the way to the destination system in Mumbai. And who is going to be responsible for forwarding these packets? Those devices are what is referred to as the router devices uh, in my network path. So, if you look at this uh, particular diagram, uh, you have different kinds of icons that you see here. So, the reason for actually giving you this different kind of an icons is to differentiate and thereby easily communicate to the end user of what are the different components that are there in a typical network topology. So, what do we mean by network topology is it is basically a network diagram which we use to illustrate the kind of connectivity, the kind of systems that are there in the network. So, that uh, we could have a very quick intuitive uh, look about how our entire network is actually structured. So, if you really see this particular uh, icon, this is an icon that is used typically to show that I have a router device uh, uh, in this portion of my network topology. right? And then if you see these kind of uh, uh, icons, these icons are actually used to show that these are typically the host or the end systems in which we discussed we, where we will be running our network uh, uh, applications. And uh, all the lines that you see here are the ones that we refer to as the communication links. Uh, so, essentially if you see for example, this could be a source system uh, which is actually connected over a modem. So, the, the telephone icon that you really see here is to denote that uh, I have a modem here. Uh, it could be typically an ADSL kind of a modem uh, uh, which is very commonly used nowadays uh, in the in any kind of a, a basic computer network. And uh, the kind of the, the systems that is actually connected here would essentially mean that uh, these systems will be running the network applications and the network application that is actually running on this system will be wanting to communicate with the network application that is actually running for example, on this system. right? And that is basically where we are talking of really the communication links coming into play over multiple routers devices on the path, which will basically be forwarding the packets from the source all the way to reach the final destination system, wherever the packet is supposed to be reaching. So, here you see I could also have a physical link that could possibly be running over a uh, uh, some kind of a satellite uh, uh, link as well. So, this kind of uh, uh, topology diagram uh, in which we will typically have all our devices. So, whether it be a end system or whether it be a, a router device or whether it be a communication link all of them captured and this network topology is what is typically used by a network administrator uh, in when he is actually designing the original design of the entire network of how it is going to be uh, structured. right? So, whenever somebody gives you a network topology, uh, the different kinds of icons that is used here as I was just mentioning uh, is will be useful for us to identify where each type of device is located for us to quickly come to an understanding of how the whole network is really structured. So, there could be different types of internet appliances. Uh, so, you could really have a IP picture frame, uh, you could uh, really have a very uh, small uh, uh, embedded web server that is typically running on all kinds of uh, uh, very uh, mini devices uh, in today's world. You could also have uh, for example, a very fancy uh, a bread toaster which could be enabled over an IP uh, network uh, for it to be even remotely monitored. And then of course, we have IP phones today. Uh, which has actually become pretty common uh, uh, as compared to having the normal voice phone for so many different reasons in terms of manageability, in terms of lesser cost and so on and so forth. Now, coming down to the communication between the different uh, type of devices that we talked of, uh, there, there are something called as a protocol uh, which will actually be used for communication. So, what exactly is a protocol? Its protocol is basically a uh, a language that two different devices in my network will use to communicate with each other. right? So, if I basically try to give a very simplistic uh, uh, layman example, we for example, uh, are using let us say an English language for communicating between two of us and unless and until the other person 
uh, with whom we are communicating also understands the same language, uh, it is going to be very difficult for two people to communicate. Likewise, the protocol in the internet world, in the internet terminology is, is a kind of a language that is typically used by human beings, uh, but the two different devices in my network which is actually trying to communicate between each other should really be talking with the same protocol on both the devices for the entire communication to be successful. So, if I basically have to explain protocol, protocol is basically a set of messages through which I will be controlling the communication between two different devices or end systems in my network. Right? So, I will be able to control, uh, I will be able to do the data transfer. So, when I say control, I essentially meaning trying to set up a communication path and also trying to close down a communication path once a data transfer is completed. Right? So, what exactly is a protocol? So, protocol is basically a mechanism uh, which is actually used by two different systems in my network and essentially they should actually be trying to follow the same protocol uh, so that they will be able to successfully communicate and exchange the data uh, which is essentially the whole purpose of actually having the network in place. So, there are different types of protocols, uh, uh, in fact network is all about uh, uh, protocol uh, and uh, again when we say protocol, protocol is all about jargons. So, you have different kind of an acronyms, uh, we will actually be slowly introducing you to different types of different acronyms that you need to be comfortable with uh, uh, if you are basically going to be working in the domain of networking. So, you could uh, basically be referred as something like a TCP protocol, uh, it could be IP protocol, HTTP, FTTP, VPP and so on and so forth and there are innumerable number of protocols uh, uh, that are there in the networking uh, uh, domain as of today. So, the protocol is something that is actually going to be used for example, uh, between the communication from this end end system to let us say this end system. right? So, uh, among the protocol that is actually listed here, one example protocol that could be used is HTTP when this end system wants to communicate to this particular end system. right? So, for example, IP uh, is another protocol that could actually be used for communicating for for example, from this router device to this particular router device. right? So, we will actually see uh, the different kinds of protocols that are used uh, uh, very commonly uh, just to ensure that we actually have some basic understanding and foundation uh, for uh, getting a clear idea about what are the most common protocols, where are they used and why should they be really used for the communication to be effective. right? So, in terms of the structure, uh, internet uh, could actually be defined as sort of a network of networks. Uh, it is very loosely hierarchical, uh, it is not strictly hierarchical in the sense I do not have a, a very well established uh, strict hierarchy mechanism for the communication to be established, uh, but I have a certain amount of hierarchy in place uh, because I could, I could really structure my entire network into something uh, as what is called as subnets. right? So, I could have a local ISP for example, controlling this part of my entire network topology uh, and I could really have a regional ISP who is a sort of at a higher level as compared to a local ISP. So, ISP here stands for internet service provider. right? So, in that way I could have it in terms of an hierarchy, but it, there is no strict structuring to it. right? And then uh, we would also have something called as a public internet versus a private intra intranet. Uh, so, public internet would essentially mean something that is accessible uh, from the internet uh, uh, across the world, whereas when I say it is a private intranet, uh, it is something which will actually be accessible only within uh, a specific network. So, for example, your organization network could be an intranet. So, your intranet uh, site, your file server that you would possibly be using for storing uh, the, the different kinds of project data, all this will be typically forming getting uh, placed under my co co company network, which will be getting classified as the intranet network. right? So, uh, if I really want to have a machine accessible from a remote machine in my network, then I will typically call it as 
part of my public internet work. Whereas, if I need to have part of my machine uh, available only within my uh, private network, that will be something referred to as a private intranet. right? So, there are different type of standards uh, uh, that are there, uh, especially for the different type of protocols. So, you will have uh, IETF, uh, which is basically the standardization body uh, for all the uh, internet working protocols. Uh, IETF basically stands for Internet Engineering Task Force. So, each protocol actually has a standard document uh, called as an RFC. So, RFC stands for request for comments and uh, if you really go to the site www.ietf.org, uh, you will find uh, in that particular site lot of uh, RFC documents and each RFC document will typically be referring to the standard, the protocol standard for a particular protocol. So, likewise you would typically have lot of RFC documents because as I was just mentioning there are uh, uh, many many protocols that are used typically the network although uh, as far as very common usage of the protocols are concerned there are only a handful of them that we will need to be familiar with. So, uh, in terms of the services point of view uh, the previous slide we looked at the, the, the definition of an internet from, a, from the point of view of uh, the individual components, but in terms of the services that are being offered uh, uh, you could typically uh, classify it based on the kind of applications that you are running. So, as we would know uh, different types of applications network applications are possible over an internet. So, it could be a web application, it could be an email application, it could be an e-commerce application. For example, we access an Amazon or a Flipkart or any of those kind of e-portals right or it could be a simple file sharing application like my Dropbox. So, I could really have any kind of an application that uh, I would need to access over the network uh, which is basically what my internet is going to provide to me as a service. right? And then uh, with respect to the communication services that are provided to the network applications, so you typically have it either as a connectionless unreliable service or a connection oriented uh, reliable service. So, we will be seeing what exactly is a connectionless unreliable service and what exactly is a connection oriented uh, reliable service. So, uh, I was just actually giving an example of uh, how uh, you would typically have a human protocol versus a network protocol. So, all uh, network protocols are actually governed by standards uh, uh, in the IETF uh, uh, group as I was just mentioning and the protocols basically define the format order of the messages that has been sent and received among the different network entities and actions that are taken on message transmission or received. So, there are basically uh, if you strictly see there are three different parts uh, from a protocol standard point of view. One which defines the format of the messages. So, what is the message that the client is going to be sending to the uh, uh, server and what is the message that the, uh, the, uh, the response message that the server is going to be sending back to the client. And second part of the uh, what is governed by the protocol is order of the messages that has been sent and received. So, uh, what is the sequence in which the message is going to be sent and received by the two uh, parties on either side of my uh, network. So, the two end systems and then thirdly the protocol is also going to be talking about what are the different actions that are basically taken uh, on the message getting uh, received and uh, also on the when the message is getting transmitted across. So, just an example of uh, how uh, a analogy could be built between uh, what a human protocol is structured and uh, how a computer network protocol is typically structured. Thank you.